Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out the Film Geek. Today I'm talking about the 1993 film, So I Married an Axe Murderer. So who's in this pentameron? The Queen, the Vatican, the Gettys, the Rothschilds, I'm Colonel Sanders before he went tetsa. Oh, I hated the Colonel with his wee beady eyes and that smug look on his face. Oh, you're gonna buy my chicken, oh! Dad, how can you hate the Colonel? Because he puts an addictive chemical in his chicken that makes you crave it fortnightly smart arse. So I Married an Axe Murderer is directed by Thomas Schlamm and it's starring Mike Myers and Nancy Trapps. A San Francisco poet who fears commitment suspects that his girlfriend, who just so happens to be a butcher, might have killed her exes and he might be next on the list. So I Married an Axe Murderer is Mike Myers' follow-up film after making the extremely popular 1992 film Wayne's World. However, So I Married an Axe Murderer really didn't have the same popularity. Filmed on a budget of 20 million, So I Married an Axe Murderer just made about $11.4 million at the box office. Critics were also quite divided on the film, and it's sitting on Rotten Tomato at a 51%. After the film's release on VHS and later on DVD in 1999, the film has gone on to be a much beloved cult classic. In order to study for her character, Nancy Travis interviewed a few butchers to find out the tricks of the trade. And one of the big things that she learned was, always keep your eyes on your meat. Never look away from your meat while you're cutting it. During the filming of a montage scene, Mike Myers is doing a lot of improv and Nancy Travis started to pay way more attention to his improv and less attention to what she was cutting and ended up cutting the tip of her finger off. Now don't go jumping on Hulu checking out episodes of Last Man Standing to see if she's missing a bit of her finger. A doctor was actually able to reattach it. So what do I like about this movie? Well first off, nostalgia. This movie really takes me back to the 1990s, like other films do too, but this one really shows off like the coffee scene of the 90s and uh, like the whole opening sequence. That whole opening sequence, it just really puts me in the happy space. Now I find this film absolutely hilarious. It's kind of like Parks and Rec in a way, where it is kind of grounded in reality, but then out of nowhere it gets kind of weird and surreal. This movie's a little bit like that too. The comedy goes from your normal slapsticky, goofy one-liners, and then it kind of gets just weird. Weird in a good way. For instance, Charlie's best friend is a cop. He's a plain clothes cop. And he starts complaining to his captain about how being a cop isn't like what he thought it would be. Like he's never got to commandeer a vehicle. He's he's never got to like jump onto a helicopter and hang on to that little part. You know that little thing at the bottom where the helicopter lands? He's never got to hold on to that. And he's really bummed out about it. And the other thing that really bums him out is that his captain is like a super nice guy. And so the captain tries to be more like that rough, tough, Starsky and Hutch kind of captain to just make the guy feel better. And the comedy, oh my God, the scenes are hysterical. Anytime the two of them are on screen, it is comedy gold. This film also has absolutely hilarious cameos. For instance, that police captain I was telling you about, that's Alan Arkin. Another standout cameo performance comes from Phil Hartman, who plays an Alcatraz tour guide, who was also a former guard that everyone called Vicky. Sometimes you might see this film classified as a dark comedy, but I don't see how it's a dark comedy. An absurd comedy, sure, but dark, no. The film is got like a serial killer vibe, but it's really lighthearted, like very lighthearted, so it's not dark at all. If anything, this film is more of a weird romantic comedy, kind of like Benny and June, rather than a dark comedy like War of the Roses. All right, guys, if you're curious and you want to check out So I Married an Axe Murderer, well, if you're a Stars subscriber, you can stream it right now. Otherwise, you can rent it on YouTube, Amazon Prime, and Google Movies. Okay, guys, that brings us to the end of another Film Geek video. If you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications, and uh, give me a thumbs up so I know you like what you're watching. And if there's another thing you can do, folks, that is keep watching movies, you know I'm gonna.